Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue the videos with Mars. And in this video, I'm going to start talking about and showing you how the proxy object works, how the replicator object works. We're also going to be looking at some conditions that we can set so that these virtual objects, which you see playing behind the scenes, actually accommodate to the real world conditions. So let's jump into Unity and I start looking at it. Thank you. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing today, which is to cover a couple of the components that are available in Mars. I'm going to be starting with using the horizontal plane, vertical plane, and also showing you how to create a proxy object, which is going to be a preset, basically, of a proxy object. That's what these two are. And also why we can use and how we can use a proxy replicator. So what I'm going to do instead of going through the different scenes that Unity provides as templates, we're going to be using a brand new scene. So I'm going to go into scenes, basic proxy, and there's really nothing on it. And you can see that as soon as I go into the simulation view and we toggle to the scene view. So simulation view is going to show you the room that you have selected, right? Like I can go into dining room. I can go into the kitchen. I can look at the device view. And I mentioned this too in the previous video. So hopefully you can watch that and understand how that works. In the same view, this is where we're going to be creating and adding our virtual content. So it didn't really make sense at the beginning when I started using it. And then now things are starting to, to make sense. And, and that's what I'm hoping that, you know, for some of you, you're going to be experimenting the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the Mars prefab, but at the same time, we're going to be creating everything from scratch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, you know what? I want to create either a horizontal plane or I can create a vertical plane. We could do this one or this one. I'm just going to do a vertical plane. You can see that it's going to show you and, and this is not the one that I want because this is actually going to show the figure uh, basically tilted and that's not what I want, but you can do that and that's going to add a proxy. So if we go to the horizontal plane, then we're going to have basically the rubber, you know, pointing up and these presets have everything set up. You could have gone and create a game object on, you know, by yourself, add a proxy and set some of these properties, which I did to kind of practice and see how this was going to work. So you can, you know, you can do that as well. But just know when you add some of these presets, it's going to be adding a proxy. And a proxy is a way to basically add an object, a virtual object, a prefab, a 3D model that is going to be proxying into and actually going into the real world. So if we add that, I'm going to show you how, how that looks. But these are some of the different settings that they have. I, I changed this. We can change the color if you wanted to, or the proxy. Change it to maybe like a red color. And in here you have, you know, you, you got to pay attention to a couple of things. One of them is going to be this panel right here. And if you notice right now, we have a horizontal plane and it shows a red, red indicator. That just means that we just don't have anything in it yet. We don't have a 3D object. This is not going to be, you know, showing in the simulation. It just shows a dot, but that's basically it. And, and actually it's just using the color that we have right here. So if we go into blue, it's actually going to show. So what actually, what this means, this means that the rules that we have applied here on the conditions, everything is, is working, meaning that it's going to proxy to the real world. So the way that Mars works is if we, if we have these rules set, it's going to say, okay, as long as the rules are going to be set, we're going to be proxying in this digital ob object to the real world. So in this case, it's showing that. And there are different icons. I'm going to show you that in the documentation they have. There's one that it actually has like a cross. That means that it's not going to proxy because the conditions on this object doesn't satisfy, you know, to be able to place it in this world. So some of the conditions that I'm talking about, it's like this one. This one has an is plane condition. So how do you know that there's a plane in there? You can go into the, you can actually go into the simulation view and click on this compare in simulation view. And you're going to see that if we get close, you're going to see that the condition passes, right? So I can select all of these different objects and I know that there's going to be a plane in here. So when you are running this on your, on AR kit or AR core, it's going to create a plane. So this condition satisfied, this is a plane. So I'm going to be placing that digital, digital object in this plane. The same thing in here, this is a plane and the alignment. That's another thing that this has. The alignment condition is going to look for horizontal up. So in this case, this is, you know, this is, you know, horizontal up. So everything is passing. And you can see that on the top left, if I let my mouse go, it's not going to show me. But if you look on the top left, we say we have is plane and passes 
alignment passes 100%. These two data points are really important. And I didn't really you know, pay much attention to it until later on when I needed to understand it really well. So just know that those, those, that little legend that you see right here is really important. In this case, the alignment doesn't satisfy the condition because it's currently set to horizontal up. So if I were to go here and change this to, well, you know what? I also want to look at planes that are vertical. Now the condition passes because we have a mixed alignment. We're saying, okay, you know what? I want to satisfy the condition against a vertical plane and also against a horizontal plane. So you can see that that also works. So I'm gonna uncheck this because this is not gonna work for what I wanna show you. The, the other thing that I'm also gonna be adding to this is going to be the plane visualizer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add it. And that way we can see the planes that are getting generated. And I'm actually gonna move it up. So you notice that the Mars session got added automatically and that's gonna happen when you add any of these components that rely on having a Mars session. So the Mars session is going to have, you know, the world scale. It's also going to have the marker library. If you're using markers, we're gonna be covering that in a future video. It's also going to have the camera, the Mars camera. So some of these things I haven't really had to play around with, but I will in future videos. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. So the plane visualizer, you know, there's a couple of things in here that you can, you can toggle. I can toggle whether I want to view the edges of these, you know, planes that got generated. I don't wanna see those edges, so I'm just gonna uncheck that. And you can also tell it whether if you use plane geometry or not. So you can see if I don't use plane geometry, it kind of looks like that. And if I enable plane geometry, it looks like this. And another cool thing that I also noticed that in AR Foundation, I had to do a lot of these things from scratch. So in here, this was all added automatically. The plane and occlusion geometry visuals were added automatically for me, so I didn't have to worry about that. So this just happens by adding you know, some of those options. And if we go to the horizontal plane, now we can control, okay, what type of objects we're gonna be, you know, we're gonna be having in this environment. I'm actually gonna be changing these. Let me go ahead and change, how about, say a living room, or we can do a kitchen. I think the one that I tested before was the kitchen. Go ahead and go into, or perhaps the dining room. Yeah, I think it was a dining room that I was playing around with. So, so right now we have a dining room, right? And the only place where we're able to see, you know, the actual horizontal, the actual proxy, it's, it's actually sitting on the top. And the reason for that is because we have to add more conditions to this. So before I do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into the Mars examples and we're gonna be pulling the prefab that we have in there for the actual character. So let me go ahead and find that. And I believe that's gonna be under examples here and then go into Mars. And if we go into prefabs, this is gonna be for the training location, but if you go into the game, you're gonna see that we have, we can look at a playable, we can look at the idle. Let's go ahead and add this one. If I go to the scene view, it's gonna go ahead and drag it and drop it here, just to make sure that's the one that I'm looking for. The other thing that we also need to do is I'm gonna be adding some lighting because we can't really see the character. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into lights and just add a directional light. I'm gonna go ahead and put that, let's put it right next to the more session so everything is organized. And I'm also gonna go into this object, make sure that everything is set to zero, zero, zero. I'm also going to go ahead and generate lights automatically. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. That way we can see our character and it looks nice, right? We wanna make sure that things look right. And we have our, so now we have our horizontal plane proxy. We have our character inside, so just by doing that, the magic of the simulation should now start kicking in. You can see that right now we're seeing the character, but for some reason we're only seeing the character at one location. And what I wanna do is I wanna add another component and this component is gonna be called the replicator. And that's the next component I wanna show you. And for this, I'm just gonna create a new object in here and I'm just gonna call it replicator. And we can just call it, I just say, let's go ahead and call it object replicator. And let's go ahead and move this up. And I'm gonna move the horizontal plane inside of the object replicator. So the object replicator is gonna do what it says that it's gonna do. It's going to basically replicate our character to multiple areas in the scene that where the plane conditions satisfy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on add component and I'm gonna just search for replicator. And you're gonna see that the condition satisfy many places in this environment. And which is cool, right? Like we can see, you know, that in this condition, the, this is a plane and this also has, you know, the 
horizontal up condition is satisfied the same the same way here the same way here so the other thing that you can do here as well because we added a replica replicator we can also tell the system to you know what i only want to do it you know twice or i want to do it three times so let's say that i want to do it twice and you're going to ask me dilmer why does it show in those two conditions first and if you go into the if you go into the actual horizontal plane and we look at the comparing simulation you're going to see that the if i hover over this it's going to say that this the alignment in east plane is 100 percent the condition is satisfied on both of them it's also satisfied on this one so i think what the what the system is doing is just picking two and then going with those two but if you start adding more conditions like we may want to add a size condition where we're looking for for planes that have a specific size in that case it's going to start looking at percentages and i'm going to show you how that works so in this case we have two instances right but what if we wanted to just look for planes that have you know maybe a certain size on the on the actual plane so in this case if i go into compare in simulation and we look at the size if i hover over this it's actually not going to show the size because i haven't added the size to this condition so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into conditions here and i'm going to click on add condition and there's multiple things that you can do you can do geofence if you want to look at look at geolocation you can also look at trays you can look at a specific height above the floor that's something that we can also play with you can also look at image markers you can look at flat floor condition the one that i'm looking for is going to be the plane size so if you look at the plane size and you click on the so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on this edit condition and i'm going to go into the scene view and let's go ahead and do that one more time and i'm going to click on there there we go and edit so you're going to see these handles in here right like that those handles what those means that's going to be for the minimum size of the plane and the maximum size of the plane so one of the things that i could do is i could say you know what i can just use the handles here and i can say you know i'm going to satisfy that condition as long as the plane is from this range and this is all in meters so this is going to be half of a meter to a meter point three so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just let's just play with the minimum size, right? So I'm just going to do 0.5 and 0.5. So the only time when this is going to be placed around uh, the real the actual environment that we're simulating is going to be when the minimum size of the plane is within this threshold, right? So now what we need to do is I'm going to go into my simulation view and you're going to see that now we're only seeing that once. The reason for that is because the condition is only satisfi satisfying that. So if I click on compare, you can see that the, the legend on right here, it's showing, okay, this is a plane, the alignment passes, the plane size also passes. And the other cool thing about this is if you go into the top, so make sure that you pay attention to this area here as I hover. Right now it's showing the selected area, it's going to be, you know, 1.96 to 0.56. If we go to this condition, this is gonna fail because the size of this the y axis is 0.42 and, and the condition that we're specifying is 0.5. So in order for that to show in this plane or like in this other plane, we would need to increment the condition. We would need to tell the system, you know what? I want to either increment the condition and then in that case, or decrement it. Like if I do something like 0.1 and we go ahead and do a resync, now we're satisfying this condition. So in this case, I'm seeing, you know, 0.5 and 0.1 and everything is satisfying in here. In this case, it's not satisfied anymore. Let me see why that is because, okay, so in this case, it didn't do that because remember the replicator, we had it set to a two. So what the system is doing is trying to find the first ones that satisfy that condition. So we go into compare and we look at the values here. So this one has a 100% chance that the plane size matches. This one has a 100% chance. If I look at this one, it also has a 100% chance. So I think it's just picking up the first two. So let's go ahead and do something else. Let's go ahead and go into my replicator here and I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and do a zero. So everything is satisf satisfying that condition because the because everything in here, it's within the 0.5 and 0.5 size that we're seeing on the simulation view. So I think what I'm gonna do on this one, I'm going to do the minimum size. Let's go ahead and do, let's do 0.5 and see what happens, right? So I'm gonna do the minimum size on this one is going to be 0.5. And now you can see that that condition is not satisfied anymore because the minimum size of the y-axis was 0.42. And if you look at look at this area right here, 
you can see that that's beyond that condition. So now we, what, we, what we're telling the system is, you know what, I don't want to place it in locations where the plane is that small. I want to place it in locations where, where the plane is you know, beyond the threshold that I'm setting. So, so far, so good, right? This is, this is really cool. This is really powerful. So what about in instances where we want the objects to be at above a specific height? So another condition that we can also, we can also specify, it's going to be, if we go here into, you can do all or you can do conditions. On the conditions, I'm gonna go into height above the floor. And right now, looks like everything is passing because the ideal height is gonna be 1.5. And in this case, this is satisfied. This one is also satisfied. So what if we were to change this to, you know what, the ideal height on this one, and we want to make sure that we're requiring the range. So I'm going to do, what if you do two, how about three? Okay, so I think nothing in here, oh, except this one, it's satisfying the condition. So what this one is doing is, is I'm going to satisfy the condition to 57% because it's, we're actually three meters above we're actually three meters above the floor. So in this case, that's going to be satisfied. How about 2.5? So it looks like 2.5, it's going to work for these two areas because in this case, the chair is about, let's see, it's about two meters above. So we're going 2.5. So that is, you know, that is above it. So it's not going to place an object there, but it's going to place an object here. And it's also going to be placing an object here. So what if we do two in this time, right? So in this case, it's going to show that one because, you know, now we're satisfying the conditions. So I'm going to do 2.5 and now we should be able to see those two objects, you know, showing in here and also in here. So, so, so far, so good. So let's go ahead and look at simulated environments. I'm going to go ahead and run the simulator environments and we're going to run the simulation with the rules that we have on every single environment that we have. And it's going to take a minute here to, to execute. So this one we already looked at. So what if we wanted to look at, let's go ahead and look at a different room, right? So in this case, if we go into the horizontal plane, we, we click on compare in simulation view. You can see that this one is passing, this one is passing, and it's about 7%. So, I mean, it still passes, and this one also still passes. So let's go ahead and look at a, at a different room. How about we look at something different? Let's go ahead and look at, in this case, this one is the kitchen. We, we place an object right here, we place that object right here, and it's also showing, you know, 22% above, and everything is working there, and we can also see, you know, that it's working in this area. We have a couple of those in here, and it looks like that's all working well. So that gives you an idea of how that works. The other things that we can also do, if we go into the, let's go ahead and look at the, look at the bedroom, right? And I'm gonna go into the device view, Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and hit play and run the simulation. And I want to make sure that we can run through the simulation. There we go. I'm just holding the W and also right click is down. And I'm basically going through the simulation. And I'm going to try to scan as much of the room as we can. And you can see that now we have one of the characters there. And let's see, let's just keep going. I'm going to just keep running around until we have couple of those objects showing and it's going to keep going and keep going until we scan most of the most most of the area we can also scan this area and I'm going to keep going so I think on the simulation view we had two objects there we go and I think, yeah, so we have the other object there. And I thought there was one more that was showing. Maybe because I haven't finished scanning this area. And I'll just keep going and scanning everything. So we can also go into another room. We can do the dining room in this case. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And we can go into device view and I'm just going to start scanning until we get the character showing. And let's go ahead and scan a little bit more. And scanning, we're scanning some of the walls, we're also scanning the floor. And you guys can see that that actually satisfied the condition. We can see the character. So hopefully that gives you an overview of what the Mars session is, what the plane visualizer is, also how to use the replicator and how to set some of the parameters in the replicator. And lastly, how you can also create a horizontal plane 
plane, a vertical plane, and how to actually change some of the conditions. Thank you guys.